I'm going to show you the difference in image quality between one five minute exposure and six hours of total integration time. And don't worry, I'm not going to be going through that in five minute increments. I'm going to show you one five minute exposure and then 30 minutes, one hour, three hours and six hours, which is the image that you can see on the screen right now. So that's where we're going to finish up, but we're going to look at some other images first before we start looking at this one in any great detail. If this is your first time here, then let me introduce myself. My name is Nick and I live in Gloucestershire in the UK under Bortle 4 Skies. And the equipment that I use for imaging currently is what you can probably just about make out behind me. I've got a three inch refractor Skywatcher Evo Star 72ED, ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. And also I tend to use the Optolong L Extreme when I'm doing my imaging. But enough about me, let's get into the images. So this is the final image that we'll get to here. This is six hours worth of data, but let's take you to five minutes worth of data first. So what we're looking at here is one five minute exposure of the Rosette Nebula using the equipment that I explained just a second ago. And all of the images that we're gonna to see today have had calibration frames applied. So the only difference between all of these images is just the total integration time. It had the same calibration frames applied. It had the same processing workflow applied to it. So the only difference is that integration time. So I think for one five minute exposure, we've pulled out a lot of detail of the Rosette Nebula here. There's a real good amount of detail here. Really happy with that. But I think the first thing that will stand out to everybody, and hopefully this comes across in the video, I'd probably recommend watching this one in 1080p if you can, because I'm very aware that sometimes when you're watching videos of pictures and I'm trying to compare things that actually the video quality that you're seeing on YouTube compared to me looking at my monitor here while I record this can sometimes be quite vast. And so it's probably best to watch this in the highest quality possible so that you can hopefully see some of the things that I'm talking about while I'm going through this. So this is a very noisy image. I mean, if I zoom right into the center here, you can see a lot of noise in this image. Oops. And I think the stars look, you know, okay. However, if we go up here, I did see one a second ago that's got the haloing around it. And this is something, if you've watched my Optolong L Extreme review, this is something that I pick up in, in that video where I'm talking about halos. And I'm not sure if that appears in the other images. So that's one to keep an eye out for. I do find that haloing tends to get better as integration time increases. I'm not sure why. If you do know, then leave a comment down below. So yeah, this is quite a noisy image. Um, but what I would say is that there's not really any gradient across here. I think this had a good set of flats and darks applied. And again, just going back to the detail, I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of detail in there just for one five minute exposure. But the thing that's killed this image the most is the noise. And that's hardly surprising just down to one five minute exposure. So if we take that up to 30 minutes, which is this image here, you can see instantly how much brighter the nebula is here and how much more faint detail around the edges that we've been able to pull out using the exact same process as I used for the five minute exposure. And I'm not going to go through my uh, image processing workflow in, in this video, but I've got plenty of videos on my channel if you're interested in that. But if we just flick back and forth between the five minute and the 30 minute, you can see a, a real difference there. So if I zoom in in particular on the five minute one and do the same on the 30 minutes, you can see that 30 minutes is still very noisy, but it is nowhere near as noisy as the five minutes. So extra light frames, this will be six five minute light frames as opposed to just one, is making this image a lot cleaner, which is great. If we zoom, uh, if we go up to the star where I saw the haloing earlier, you can still see that haloing on this star as well. And actually there's another one just there that's got the haloing. You can only really see it if you zoom right in, to be honest, I think nobody is going to notice that if you're just sharing this on Instagram or Twitter or something like that. And let's go down to the corners here. So again, what we're looking at here, I think the stars look pretty good, but you can see that this whole area is just really quite noisy. And I did do some noise reduction when processing these images. So actually the noise has been reduced quite significantly. That gives you an idea of just how noisy these images were originally. So 
But if we if we zoom back out and just do another comparison against the five minute one from a second ago, you can see that that is a huge difference in nebulosity. It is a lot brighter, I've been able to pull out a lot more detail, a lot more color. And that just looks a lot better. And in terms of the Rosette Nebula itself, if you're just looking at the deep sky object itself, I think that's a, a reasonable image to share, in my opinion. But what kills it is all of the noise around it. And so this is not particularly something you would want to share on social media, I don't think. But that just gives you an idea of what six light frames can do. So just an extra five light frames compared to that, I think is excellent. So that was 30 minutes. Let's now go to an hour. So this is one hour. And again, if we go straight back to the 30 minutes, I think the big difference that you'll see here is the fact that the noise is far less than it was in the previous two images. In terms of nebulosity, I think it looks pretty similar, to be perfectly honest. If I just go back to the hour now, yeah, I think the nebulosity is, is very similar, but what I'm seeing is that if we zoom into these bits on the side here, that the noise compared to the 30 minutes is drastically reduced, and that just gives for a much, much cleaner image. And this looks a lot better. I think the background is a good color. Um, the stars are looking pretty good. Let's go back. So the halo is becoming more prominent on this star. So as the data gets cleaner, then that star halo is becoming more prominent, as is that one that we looked at just a second ago as well. But I think this is a pretty reasonable image. You could have gone, I think, much heavier on the noise reduction. Um, and I think... If we zoom into the middle there, I think you're, you're starting to look at what I would probably call the absolute bare minimum of an amount of data to share on social media. Because unless you really zoom into this picture, people aren't going to see the noise, especially by the time that um, Instagram or Twitter have compressed it to shit. This, um, I, you, I, you probably won't notice that unless people zoom in on social media, which I don't think people tend to do, to be honest. So I think that is a really good image and as I say probably the bare minimum that you'd be wanting to share and if you if you went a bit heavier on the noise reduction then you probably got yourself a really good image there so that was twice the amount of data obviously from the 30 minutes image so if I now go to three hours I don't think you'd have noticed that I really changed the image there if we just go back to one hour and then to three there's not a huge amount of difference again in terms of nebulosity I think we're looking at better colors and probably a sharper image when we're looking at the nebula. I think it looks sharper. It looks much nicer. I think, yeah, the detail is pretty much exactly the same, if I'm honest. But if we zoom in, um, sorry, that's one hour. If we zoom into um, the three hours and then go back to the one hour, you can see a lot more noise in the one hour compared to this one in the three hours where actually the noise is it's not gone it's still there but again if i zoom into a corner down here and compare that to the previous image you can see a lot more noise i hope this is coming across in the video it's a lot more noise on the one hour here compared to the three hours here. This image is a lot cleaner. And let's have a look at that star halo again. Yeah, we see we're still getting the halo there and this one here, and there's a bit just there as well, but it's not too bad compared to some of my other images with the haloing from the Optolong L Extreme filter. Um, this is actually pretty good. And let's start looking at this detail here around the sort of 12 o'clock position. Yeah, I think when we're looking at the three hours, that is just so much cleaner, which makes the image just much nicer to look at. When you're trying to look at the detail and the nebulosity, it just makes it look a lot better. It's just so much smoother. And I would say that I'd probably be pretty happy to share that on social media. In fact, I did share that uh, on social media, albeit that I processed this image at a completely different time. So I've not shared this exact version, but I did share a three hour version 
maybe a month ago on social media with a bit heavier hitting on the noise reduction, but I think that's a pretty a pretty reasonable image and I'm very happy with that. It's just um, the noise really. And then finally, this is six hours and this is the image that I shared on social media um, most recently. If you watched my last video where I was using PixInsight, um, this is the image um, that I shared. And you can see straight away, if I go back to the three hours compared to the six, what we're looking at here in terms of quality, if we zoom in, I'll zoom into the middle, you can see that the noise has not been completely eradicated, but not far off especially when you compare it to the three hours, there's far, far less noise in this image. If we go up to the stars that were haloing, I think you can still see the haloing there, but actually it makes it just look like one big star there. So it actually makes it look better. Um, there's some haloing down here as well, but uh, people aren't going to notice that. Um, let's have a look over maybe in the top left. I don't think we've looked here in the image yet and do the same on this one. So you can see a, a, an amount of noise there in the three hour image, but in the six hours that looks a lot cleaner. The stars look sharper. I think that's a massive difference. If we're looking at the, the quality of the stars in this image, you can see they're quite um, fuzzy. In this one, they're looking sharper. And again, it's the exact same in terms of image processing. So that's made a real difference there, much cleaner. And when we start looking at the nebula, I think this is probably where you can see a, a real difference in quality where actually I don't think you would know that those two images were processed in the exact same way. Um, and it was exactly the same. I did the same curves adjustments and everything. There was nothing that was different in processing these images, but you can see the color, not just of the nebula, but also of the background. You can see that this is a noisy, lighter background. This is a much darker background. And to be honest, I think I prefer the color of this background. This background looks as though I've actually started to clip um, the black point, which I ha I haven't, but I would say the data is probably touching all the way over to the left where, where it's not far off being clipped. But the color I think is a lot better here and it's just much more enjoyable to look at the finer detail in this image compared, uh, sorry, in this image <laughs> compared to this one. So that's six hours. Now, often the images that I will share on social media will generally have about six hours worth of total integration time because that is generally what I can get from one night's worth of imaging dependent upon where uh, the object is in the sky. I'd like to get a lot more integration time. However, with clear skies being very few and far between, um, particularly between full moons and things like that, then often six hours is actually the most I am able to get out of an object before the seasons have changed and the object is no longer in my field of view, unfortunately. What I'd be really interested in doing is taking this up to something like 10, 12 hours. So getting double the amount of data on here again compared to this image and doing a comparison. I would imagine at that point that the the last few bits of noise that I can see in the center here would probably be completely eradicated. The stars would probably look even better. And I wonder if I'd start to be able to pull out a bit more of this detail right around the edges here in comparison to the images that I've got here. So I'd be really interested in that. But as I say, clear skies often um, don't allow me to be able to do that because I'm 95% cloud cover. So I think we can all agree that having started from here and ending here, the huge difference in image quality, not just in noise, but in terms of color and nebulosity and quality of the stars, you can see that there's such a massive difference and why continually adding to your total integration time is just a great idea. And the idea of only getting, say, one hour's worth of data on a target and then moving on to a different target for imaging, I think you can agree the difference between that and that is huge. And so it is really worth spending 
a good amount of time imaging just one target rather than trying to hop between targets. Even if you're limited on the amount of clear skies you have, like we all are here in the UK, I think this image is just so much better than, than that. And I think we could all agree on that. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this final image and all the other images that you've seen. And if you're looking for a quick way to edit your astrophotography in Photoshop, then go ahead and click into this video right here, where I explain how to process astrophotography in less than 10 minutes. My name is Nick and you've been watching Astro Exploring and I'll see you in the next video.